of Terraria, there is a lot to learn, and because of this, lots of confusion arises about a lot of seemingly basic things, such as building a house that allows for NPCs to move in. This game does not hold your hand. It allows for a lot of surprises, and with this comes many questions that are waiting to be answered. This is not to say that the developers did not care, but rather wanted players to have a unique experience of the unknown. Terraria has many biomes, this being the desert, jungle, and snow, just to name a few. There's a lot of diversity of trees, ores, and even different enemies, depending on where you are in the world. This helps piece together a relationship of the world with the player. This added with the fact that many structures are randomly generated is rather remarkable, and also allows for a lot of replayability. I think my personal favorite is the dungeon after hard mode just because there's so much awesome loot and stuff to explore. Speaking about loot, there is more than enough loot to go around. This goes from rocket launchers to swords that shoot cats. There really is no end to the madness. Compared to a game like Minecraft, Terraria feels uh, maybe a little less grounded perhaps, but ultimately it brings the game to life. There's something special about finding a new drop from an enemy that you thought had no more surprises left to give. Some drops are very sought after, like the Ox Shield or the Coin Gun. Some items take the shape of biome keys, which can be used to find elemental weapons in the dungeon. My personal favorite would probably be the Vampire Knives. Talking about vampires reminds me of all the events that take place. To list a few of my favorites, I would have to put Solar Eclipse, Pirate Invasion, and probably Martian Madness. These for the most part are completely random and occur depending on how far along you are into the game. It's also important to note that the NPCs have different dialogue and may even sell different items depending on some of these factors. While I do really enjoy the randomness of it all, it can get pretty annoying to fight invasion after invasion when you just want some peace and quiet. Some very good items can come from invasions like the Broken Hero Sword, which can be crafted with the True Knight's Edge to make the Terra Blade which is one of the best swords in the game, and is quite a pain in the butt to craft on early on in hard mode. Another thing that is pretty hard about hard mode is, um, let me think, everything. Just when you think you get a handle on the situation and become rather powerful, you end up right back where you began. As frustrating as this is at times, it's also quite refreshing. You will die a lot, and I do mean a lot, but the game itself kind of transforms into something special. Many new bosses are available along with new strong weapons and gear to face off anyone in your way. While it may be somewhat grindy to get in a good spot, it does not feel boring and dull. Mining for titanium, cobalt, or whatever the case has somewhat of a learning curve. For example, Chlorify only exists in the jungle. To new players, this may seem kind of confusing, but to veterans, that's nothing more than common knowledge. Moving on to the combat itself, which I think ultimately comes down to a lot of statistics. Luckily, none of which are very boring, and actually blends into a lot of the actual gameplay. There are four classes in the game being Melee, Magic, Ranger, and the Summoner. My last playthrough of the game was with the Ranger, who's especially powerful once Chlorified Bullets become a necessity. Rangers can deal heavy damage but still stay at a safe range. This class is very similar to magic which depletes mana over time. Magic weapons often deal a lot of damage, even more than rangers. However, you must wait for a mana bar to refill instead of a constant flurry of bullets. This can be countered with potions, however, there are cooldowns that prevent constant damage from happening. Stuff like that really shows how much foresight the developers had when making the game. Other classes I feel have a little less love like the Summoner, who while is still very powerful, does not feel as fun to play with. Regardless, it's always fun to get an ally to join your side. The last class would of course be Melee. This was and still is the most popular class. While it may not be the most enjoyable way to play through the game, it does offer the most possibilities. This comes from weapons themselves, potions, and even pets. Melee is the strongest out of the four classes in most stages of the game. This combined with its durable armor, well, it's kind of hard not to succeed. Another great way to succeed in Terraria is getting as many NPCs as possible. Different NPCs have different purposes 
and some become absolutely obsolete as the game progresses, while some are essentially worthless from the get-go. But this rarely negatively impacts my playthrough. This is mainly because a lot of funny and witty dialogue is exchanged. Some of the villagers can crack me up. It's obvious the developers have a great sense of humor and decided to incorporate that inside the game. I think my favorite NPC is probably the mushroom guy. He sells important equipment that can make shroomite bars, which are very valuable and a must-have if you're a ranger in hard mode. He also confirms a lot of, um, uh, let's call it, uh, suspicions about the game, and he's just funny in general. And the way you actually get him to move inside his house is an experience within itself. It's always fun to experiment with what looks good and create a mega fortress or base, or even a separate location, just for your NPCs. This brings me to my next topic, which is building. While it may not be as superior as Minecraft, for example, it still is very enjoyable. There are many materials that can be found in the world in different aesthetics that come from different biomes. And if you have a good idea for designing, then the building will, it's, it's just going to come naturally. I've seen a lot of crazy builds, and it's really amazing to see just how advanced it can be. For example, you can make blocks in the foreground go to the background while the use of redstone. This can add many new layers and also keep your home accessible. There are also mob farms that heavily rely on redstone to be utilized effectively. These mob farms are often designed to get a lot of money or a specific item, such as the Slime Staff or ROD, also known as the Rod of Discord. They are almost essential to progress at a reasonable rate. As always, the game does not hold your hand, so it's up to you to figure out how to find the traps or buy the redstone and also set the rig up effectively. This, while challenging and frustrating, feels very satisfying to build a perfect AFK farm. It also helps that you get tons of loot, biome keys, and overpowered weapons. This once again brings me to the conclusion that progression is one of the few things I think should have flowed better. It feels to me like it's a completely different game once you get into hard mode. And while this in itself is not such a bad thing, I still feel like it's kind of forced, and it makes some invasions or bosses that much more frustrating. I do appreciate a challenge, but I would also like to fight a battle that I could potentially win also. Speaking of a challenge, I think that Terraria, in essence, is a boss game. Maybe not to the extent of the core game, but a lot of it does revolve around bosses. To my knowledge, there are 17 bosses. King Slime, Queen Bee, Eye of Cthulhu, Eater of Worlds, Brain of Cthulhu, Skeletron, Wall of Flesh, Queen Slime, The Destroyer, The Twins, Skeletron Prime, Plantera, Golem, Empress of Light, Lunatic Cultist, Duke Fishron, and of course the Moon Lord. <laughs> wow, I'm almost out of breath. Anyways, all have their own unique drop strategies and summoning rules, such as the King Slime who randomly decides he wants to absorb your house at any time. Bosses are a tool that give a sense of scale and progression. It's always cool to test out new overpowered weapons on old bosses that no longer put up much of a fight, just to see how far you came. It also works on the other side of the spectrum when fighting a really difficult boss with a weak weapon in comparison. It can be really humbling to see just how weak you are compared to literally everything. It feels great to finally clutch a victory against a tough boss. I think my personal favorite would probably be Plantera. There is a big learning process not only in the fight itself, but also in many other things, such as redstone, arena building, navigation, through cave systems, and so on. The point is that every boss teaches you a different lesson on how to become a more well-rounded player. Terraria is one of those games that may seem somewhat confusing and frustrating at first, but the more you play, the more you understand what makes it so appealing. If that means getting deeper and deeper in a cave, fighting against hordes of enemies, or simply building a mega city, well, the point is that what makes the game fun is completely up to you. Do what you enjoy, because there is no main story to complete or some obscure main objective. You are the main objective. If you enjoy dying a million times in a row to Duke Fishron, go for it. If you like to create 3D structures in a 2D world, go for it. If you like to throw the guide in lava, we are all up for it. At the end of the day, Terraria is a fantastic game, 
and is not overrated in the slightest. I wish that I could wipe my memory and play it for the first time again, but for the time being, I guess I'm just gonna have to start a new playthrough. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more weekly content. It would mean so much to me as a creator if you could support my channel. Anyways, I would love to hear your thoughts on Terraria and any video suggestions you may have. And thanks again for making it to the end of the video, and remember to have a good day.